Well, the next slide reminds us that we're looking at this event in chapter 7. So in your Bibles, look at Isaiah 7. Look at the historic signature. It's in the days of Ahaz. It's when Syria and, and Pekah, the northern kingdom, were bothering Israel. And chapter 7 gives us Christ's birth and glorious reign. Now, I'm going to take you through these slides. And this is now, if you look at the slides, this is actually the page of my Bible I keep holding up. And I want to show you that this unsuccessful invasion of Judah by Syria and Israel, because of the presence of the Assyrians on the northern part of Syria, uh, which is what prompted them to attack, look at what is right in the middle of this passage. This is one of the greatest prophecies of Jesus Christ's coming. This is the key verse on the incarnation. And I'm going to read it with you and think about it with you. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. What is that? Well, look up from this slide and go to Matthew. This is a promise in Matthew chapter 1 in the Gospel by Matthew in verse 23 of the supernatural entrance of Jesus into the world. Do you remember, no, nobody has ever come into the world like Jesus. Jesus had no human father. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit within Mary, a virgin. And this is what Joseph, who was led by God to shelter Mary and to not know her until after the birth of Jesus, even though they were betrothed to be married and he took her as his wife, he did not have any sexual involvement with her because, look at this, behold the virgin, this is Matthew 1, shall be with child and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. That's Matthew 1 and verse 23. Now look back at your slide. Behold, right there in the center, a virgin, that's Mary, shall conceive and bear a son, that's Jesus, and call his name Emmanuel, which Matthew tells us, which being interpreted is God with us. Well, that's chapter 7. Now look at the next slide. This is chapter 8. And as we go through this, chapter 8 emphasizes God with us. Look at verse 8 right here. It says, he will pass through Judah, he will overflow and pass over, he will reach up the neck, and stretching out his wings, he will fill the breadth of your land, O Emmanuel. There's that promise, God with us. Look at verse 10. It says, take counsel together, but it will come to nothing. Speak the word, it will not stand, for God is with us. There's the translation. And then, look at this over here in verse 19. And when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mutter, should a people seek, shouldn't a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? And then finally, right here in verse 13, it kind of crystallizes what we're talking about. The Lord of hosts, this is chapter 8 of Isaiah, verse 13. The Lord of hosts, him you shall hallow, let him be your fear. Now look up for a second. What? What is the context? Remember in our class uh, yesterday, we talked about the primary way to understand the interpretation of any passage of scripture is the context. What is the context here? Real quickly, we're looking, we're looking at Judah. Those are the southern, remember that's the southern kingdom. Judah is seeing in the distance the coming of these Assyrians. And I already have described them, how rapacious, how uh, they just came uh, as terrorists. I mean, the historians say the first thing they did in every campaign was when they would destroy the first city, they would take some of the people that they had destroyed, take their heads, and put them in baskets, and in the next city they were coming to attack, they actually would make a pyramid entrance for their army going toward the city, kind of like two gates of heads, severed heads of their victims. Then, as the people were watching from the walls, they would take some poor, unfortunate person that they captured from a nearby city, 
and stake them down and begin to flay them and skin them alive, hopefully that they would scream to even more terrorize the inhabitants of the besieged city. So that the Assyrians are taken city after city after city, and right here is Jerusalem. And here they are, the army is going from one city, making piles of heads, going to the next city, skinning people alive, and you can just connect the dots. You know they're coming your way. That's why, if you look back at this slide, look at verse 13. The Lord says, I'm with you. You should trust me instead of verse 19 where, see, he says, trust me here, don't do this. Don't go the wrong direction and go to these uh, soothsayers and witchcraft. Now in the next slide, we're in chapter nine. This is a continuation of this teaching on the incarnation. Here's the key verse right here. See verse six? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Do you know what else it says in uh, chapter 9? Look at this verse. Do you recognize that? It says, By the way of the sea, by the way beyond Jordan, in Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light is shine. Now, look up from your Bibles and go back with me, or from the slide, go back with me to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, starting in verse 23. This is what makes Isaiah so significant of all the books of the Old Testament. Look at Matthew 4 and verse 23, and it says that Jesus... Uh, went about all Galilee, verse 23, teaching in their synagogues the gospel of the kingdom. When did that start? Back up to chapter 4, verse 12. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, that's John the Baptist, he departed to Galilee, which we just read about for his preaching ministry. And verse 13, leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum. Now, look at verse 14 that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, verse 16, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Now that's Jesus announcing his ministry. But that's quoting Isaiah. Look back at the slide. That's quoting, look where we are in Isaiah 9-2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. That's talking about Jesus coming with his ministry. Now, look up and let me show you again on the board. In, as the Assyrians were coming toward Judah, north of Judah, the capital of the southern kingdom was Jerusalem, right here. The capital of the northern kingdom, Israel, was Samaria. This is Samaria, right here. Right above Samaria is the Sea of Galilee, and the Jordan River went like this, down to the Dead Sea. So here's the Sea of Galilee, here's Samaria in the mountains, and here are the Assyrians coming. And what what is going on as the Assyrians come from far away and as they do their campaign of destroying city after city, they get to this region of Galilee and they start destroying cities around Galilee. So they have come from Assyria, they've conquered every nation, and now they're in Israel, in the northern half of Israel, and the Assyrians go all the way around and finally hit Samaria. And everywhere they stop as they come around this area, they're killing people. Now listen to chapter 4. Now looking at this map, 
think of these words. The land of Zebulun, that's the tribal area that, that is surrounding the Sea of Galilee. The land of Naphtali, uh, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. Here's the Jordan, and the way of the sea is a road that went down this way. This, this prophecy that's in chapter 9 is saying everywhere that the Assyrians marauded and killed and destroyed and butchered people, they called it the region of death. Now look back at the slide. By the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. Now look back at my map. Guess what was right in the middle of this region that the Assyrians wiped out? This is the city that Jesus in the New Testament, centered his ministry on. See, this prophecy in Isaiah 9, 6, about the Assyrians destroying all these people and bringing this to a region of death and finally conquering Samaria and hauling away the northern tribes never to come back, is highlighting that when the promised one of Isaiah 9, 6, when the incarnate, glorious God the Son came, he would announce his ministry right there. So back to Matthew chapter 4. Let me read it again. When Jesus heard John was put in prison, Matthew 4, 12, he departed to Galilee. He left Nazareth. He dwelt in Capernaum right there. And he quotes from Isaiah and fulfilled. Notice what it says in 14. Fulfilled what Isaiah said. See, this is why Isaiah is so vital. Isaiah shows the prophecies and their fulfillment that attest and verify to the veracity, the inspiration of the scripture. The land of Zebulun, this area around the Sea of Galilee, uh, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea and beyond Jordan, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region of the shadow of death, the light has dawned. And from that time on, verse 17 of Matthew 4, Jesus began to preach and say, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All of that centered on chapter 9.